It is another beautiful night for Philippine basketball as we welcome you to your continuing coverage of the 2022 MBBL playoffs. Tonight, we only have one game at hand. It is Judgment Day between the Pampanga Giant Lanterns and the Bataan Risers as we come to you live from the Brengiao Convention Center all the way from San Fernando, Pampanga. Ladies and gentlemen, it is jam-packed once more these kapampangans are ready to support their very own home team against Chris Torado and the Bataan Risers who actually won game number two in this very venue Chris Torado is averaging 18 points per game in this series and he will face the all-star of the Pampanga Giant Lanterns Archie Concepcion who is averaging 16 and a half points per ball game in games one and two. Thank you so much for joining us live on One Sports Plus. Mix Gomez at your service alongside Javi Palanya. Javi, you covered game two of this matchup. So, what are your expectations for Bataan and Pampanga game number three? Well, only one thing. This is going to be a dogfight for sure. Pampanga, they don't lose a lot on their home floor. So, this will definitely be a toss-up between these two teams who will be able to perform well in this game. You can definitely sense the pride in these Kapampangas. Not, not only the crowd, but the team as well. And speaking of pride, of course, we have our pride at court side, na si Sheila Salaysay. Sheila, good evening to you. Magandang gabi, Mix, of course, and Javi at sa lahat natin mga kaligang nakatutok on a Friday night. What else can they do? Siyempre, i-enjoy ang Game 3. These two teams expect a blowout. Umabot pa ng overtime yung Game 2. At uh, itong dalawang uh, teams na to, ito na lang ang hihintay natin para kung sino ang mananalo dito, magkukompleto, makukompleto ang ating cast ng North Division Final. So who is hungry? Pareho sila, pero but who has more passion and heart? Yan ang ating magkutungahayan sa larong ito. Thank you so much, Sheila. Tamang-tama po siya. The winner will advance to the semifinals to go up against the undefeated Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguard. Tonight we are coming to you live on One Sports Plus with our delayed telecast on One PH. And of course, thank you so much for joining us as well on the Facebook Live and the YouTube channel of the MPBL. And speaking of those of you who are watching, thank you also for commenting your thoughts, sharing it to us on social media. We want to give a shout out to you guys. We have John Kela Jonisho saying good luck para Gio Soriano Espuelas of Bataan. Wag mo isuko ang Bataan Risers. We also have Nina Manganti saying, ito na, go Pampanga, good luck and light up the lanterns once more. Again, we missed the, the MPBL action for one week. And we also have Nelson Tobe saying, both teams, good luck, let's go MPBL. Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And again, do comment your thoughts. Give us questions, maybe some shout-outs as well on social media. Keep on being interactive as we go along with our game number three between Pampanga and Bataan. Now, Javi, let's discuss our playoff bracket to see the situations in both the North and the South Divisions. We mentioned that the winner of this matchup will go up against the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. What else is happening? Uh, already passing in uh, San Juan advancing uh, in their respective series. Right now, nakikita na lang natin sino ang tatapat sa Nueva Ecija. It's a very going to be an exciting matchup in the second round para sa Rice Vanguards who are still yet to lose in this tournament. And then on the South Division, Zamboanga now uh, already advancing as well. Alang Rizal surprisingly pulling off that upset against the Sarangani Marlins and bukas malalaman natin kung sino sa Batangas at Bacoor ang uh, matakakatapat ng Rizal Golden Coolers. And as today we have the action in Pampanga. Tomorrow we go back to the Batanga City Coliseum the home of the inaugural champions of the MPBL. Now we talk about game number two between Bataan and Pampanga. That game went into overtime. Javi, give us your thoughts. This was a crazy game. Both teams really stepped up uh, their performances in this one and they really kept toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other throughout the game. Uh, Bataan was down actually for the most part. Pampanga kept control and actually had a chance to win it in regulation. Kaya lang Bataan was able to hold strong. Escuelas was able to drain two clutch free throws to get, get it into overtime and Bataan was able to pull off that two-point squeaker over the Giant Lanterns who don't lose a lot on this home floor, the Brent Giao Convention Center. You always say this, that game was crazy and uh, as crazy as it was, we even even had fans watching from the windows of this very venue. Ganun po ang ganda yung matchup na yan. And remember, it was Pampanga's home court, but Coach Ricky Dandan's Bataan team 
was able to get that victory. And you see, when you when Coach Ricky Dandan has that smile on his face, you can bet that his team really was able to perform well. Numbers here on your screen, both teams still struggling from the field. 35.4% para sa Batan and Pampanga, 378 But they dramatically increased their free throw numbers in this game, almost by half. 21 out of 34 for the Risers and 24 out of 45 for the Giant Lanterns. But it was really the rebounds that made the difference in this game. Those 21 offensive rebounds accounted for 16 second chance points as opposed to only 12 for the Giant Lanterns as well as the bench points. 36 to 20 plus 16 advantage. Good for you to mention the free throw shooting because Batan only shot the ball at a 52% clip from the line in game number one. And also as expected, Pampanga dropped their shooting numbers, especially from the three-point range. And now we have two players to watch out for tonight. We have our point guards for Bataan and Pampanga, respectively. Chris Dorado, we mentioned 18 points per game in this series. He has turn, turned out to become a star for the Bataan Risers. And then on the other end of the floor, we have MJ Garcia, who is now blossoming as well for Pampanga. Exactly. And you know, Chris Dorado had a great game already in game one. 14 points, four rebounds, eight assists and two steals, but stepped up in the scoring department in Game 2, was very pivotal in getting the risers that win 85-83 to 83 against the Giant Lanterns. But MT Garcia, this guy has just been getting better and better as the season goes down the wire. And he has emerged as the lead guard para kay Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, really performing well in that point guard spot para sa Giant Lanterns. MJ Garcia played 37 minutes the most for the Papanga Giant Lanterns in game number two. He told us that he is used to playing the wing position, but of course, if given the trust, he will play that point yard position with the best of his ability. Now, these two players, Chris Dorado and MJ Garcia, are with Sheila Salaisai. Yes, thank you, Mix. Sama ko na nga Chris Dorado, of course, and MJ Garcia, pero nahi ko na Chris, last game, you played 43 big minutes. So, sa tagal na nilalaro mo, at umabot ka pa ng overtime, so ba kinukuha yung lakas, intensity, at fire? Uh, sa... Kasi wala na kami, wala nung kapalitan eh, kaya binubuhos ko na yung lahat. Kasi tsaka last game na, parang last game na namin yun eh. Kaya all in na kami nun sabi ni Coach, all in na. Maraming salamat. Dito naman eh, MJ, 37 minutes, you produce big points, 23. Bata yung team nyo, mas maraming uh, fresh legs. Paano nyo ba masusustain at uh, makuha itong game day para sa inyong kabalan? Ayun, uh, nagtsaga kami sa practice, uh, nagprepare talaga kami, uh, all out, uh, focus talaga namin defense. Maraming salamat and good luck to both teams. Simulan na natin ang ngayong lang laro ng Mapampanga at Bataan. Pasok na sa ating venue na Sorcerer Richard Tapos. This is gonna be exciting. Ay ni na ing peka panayan you! It's a win or go home between one Bataan Risers Kamaya Coast and your Pampanga Giant Lanterns AMG 3 Construction. This is the OK Bet Manny Pacquiao's MPBL fourth season playoffs presented by Extreme. Here's the starting vibe for one Bataan Risers Kamaya Coast. Power forward number four, Jetro Sombero. Starting at guard number nine, Reggie Bilugan. Forward number 19, John Bondok. Playing at center number 39, Jamil Gabawan. And at point guard number 25, Chris Torado. One Bataan Risers Kamaya Coast is led by Ricky Dandan. Assistant coaches Mark Dandan, Frederick Francisco, Randy Rodriguez, Miko Dandan, Alex Calway, and Raycon Kabigting. LGU coordinator is Erwin Oxy Oximoso. Assistant team manager is Ricky Maliksi. Let's meet your Pampanga 
Giant Lanterns AMG3 Construction. Number one, Ernest Reyes. Number four, John Capulong. Number seven, Jericho Isidro of Minalin, Pampanga. Number nine, Dominic Pera. Number 16, Renz Capulong. Number 20, Topeng Lagrama. Number 28, from Lubao, Pampanga, Daryl Pascual. Number 31, Lawrence Maliari. Number 34, Mitchell Minus. Number 30, your very own from San Fernando, Pampanga, Raymond Pinuya. Starting at center, number 81, Jammer Hamito. Power forward number 10, Alex Ramos. And the other forward number 6, Jason Apollonio. One guard number 11 from Angeles City, Pampanga, MJ Garcia. And at the two guard, number two from Soclaban, Mexico, Archie Concepcion. Pampanga Giant Lanterns, AMG3 Construction. Head coach is Pampanga Honorable Governor Dennis Delta Pineda. Assistant coaches, Pedic Dimatulak of Minalin, Jordan Skiaw of Angeles City, Pampanga, with Jordan Birai. Team manager and team owner is AJ Gonzalez. Assistant team managers, Ronald Nulud and Raymond Gibara. Coaching consultants are Eric Gascon and Alan Trinidad. Now both teams at the center court for the pregame handshake. Referees for this ball game are John Al Belnas, Ruben Agbalo, and Rodel Brida. Welcome to game Portman number three of this North Division quarterfinal series between the Pampanga Giant Lanterns and the Bataan Risers. The road team will begin with Chris Dorado, Reggie Bilugan, Jamil Gabawan, Jetro Sombero, and Jong Bondok. As for Pampanga, they have their homegrowns, MJ Garcia and Archie Concepcion on their backcourt playing alongside Alex Ramos, Jammer Hamito, and Jason Apolonio. This is do or die, the judgment day for Pampanga and Bataan. Whoever will win this matchup today will advance to the semifinals of the North Division and it will begin this Monday in the Nueva Ecija Coliseum all the way from Palayan City. Somewhere out there, Coach Gerson Capiltes and the rest of the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards are for sure watching this matchup. And we also have to remember, as much as the Papanga Giant Lanterns have that home court advantage today, they did have the same situation in game number two, which they lost against Bataan. Yeah, you know, Bataan is ready for anything that the Giant Lanterns will be uh, giving them in today's game. They uh, have experience having their backs against the wall in game two. And right now, this is the time that they will leave it all on the floor para dito sa game three. Bataan did not start with their two all-stars, James Castro and RV Bringas. Bringas usually comes off the bench but James Castro is playing hurt. Remember, he suffered a wrist injury and back spasms in game number one of the series. You gotta give it to James Castro. He's been battling injuries all season long, but he still uh, managed to emerge as the top one for the risers, performing at situations where they need him the most. The other end, Jason Apolonio is back in the starting lineup, who's also playing hurt. 
But this guy is 100% healthy. MJ Garcia with the first two points of this ball game. Well, if Apolonio is playing hurt, this guy is playing fantastically. Ito si MJ Garcia really flourishing as the lead guard para kay Governor De Dennis Delta Pineda has good length and good size for that position. It is an ample matchup for the smaller Chris Torado. Chris Torado cannot answer back on the other end. You mentioned MJ Garcia playing that point guard position. Talk to him before this game. He mentioned he grew up as a wing player, a two or a three, playing alongside Toping Lagrama. And right now, an assist to Alex Ramos, who gives us that turnaround shot. And that's why MJ Garcia has uh, had trouble st uh, stepping into that role at the start of the season. Hindi na walaga siya sanay maghandle ng bola for the most part of the offense. But he has learned how to be how to develop that handle and has uh, learned how to protect that basketball and set up the offense beautifully for Pampanga, especially in the open floor. How about this guy, Alex Ramos, showing us that he also has that touch. Alex Ramos, really great uh, uh, position player here para sa Pampanga, knocking down that perimeter jumper. And that's an offensive foul, moving screen. Laban dito sa Giant Lanterns. Boy, I hope the fans watching on TV and on the live stream are hearing this. It is really loud inside the Ben Gao Convention Center as you take a look at that charge against Jamil Gabawan. Uh, uh, but the An has to be able to minimize these kinds of things. They cannot afford a lot of mistakes down the wire, especially against Papanga on their home floor. Archie Concepcion, that's in and out for the All-Star. Archie is obviously the crowd favorite in this place. Jetro Sombero, that's a good pass from Pizarrado. That's a miscommunication between Concepcion and Alex Ramos. Nobody marking Jetro Sombero, who was all alone near the basket for the easy deuce. Sombero was scoreless in game number two. Even though he played 17 minutes, zero out of two from the field. Apolonio, good fake. He drives. And the kick, it's stolen away. Torado, they go to Bilugan. One of the youngest guys in that Pataan roster, Reggie Bilugan. Torado with a spin. The dish. That's assist number two. And it's two points for Jamil Gabawan. That's a great attack by Chris Torado. Attracting the defense first. Spinning into the lane and then leaving it for his big man, Jamil Gabawan, who goes up for that two points. You can't forget about the fact that Jamil Gabawan is the only champion in this Pataan Risers team when he got the trophy playing alongside the San Juan Knights. Garcia will miss. Chance for Bataan to get their first lead in this ball game. It makes Gabawan has been a very valuable asset for them in terms of leading them, especially in pressure pack situations, because he knows how to play in these kinds of moments. Great confidence by Jetro Sombero. How about this guy bouncing back in game number three? Now I think Jetro Sombero realizes that he has to put on the points para sa kanila at that forward spot to be able to uh, veer away some attention mula kay James Castro and RV Bringas, especially when they come off the bench. Oh, that's a good block by John Bondok. One guy on the chase, Bilugan. That's no chase down for Apolonio. Reggie will proceed to the line. La Pampanga struggling to get anything going on their offensive end. Here's that drive by Jetro Sombero. Terrible individual defense by MJ Garcia, letting Jetro blow by him with just one pick and a sidestep to get that layup. He mentioned Sombero was scoreless in game number two. He was also scoreless in game number one. So those are his first two baskets of this series. Archie Concepcion now hearing it from his coach at the sideline as we turn you over to Sheila Salaisai. Kung may isang aspeto ang Bataan Risers na tunay na may pagmamalaki ni Coach Ricky Dandan, it's his team playing with purpose. Sabi ni Coach Ricky, he sees the desire of his players to learn and continue playing with the system with a lot of grit and is proud to represent their hometown. And a bit of trivia, Coach Ricky Dandan, Coach Mark Dandan, and Coach Miko Dandan, and Coach Frederick Francisco were all from UP and it's their first time to work together. So mga isko din sila katulad nating tatlo. Pero ang mantra nila, as always, is there is no way but up and all in for tonight's game. Para naman sa kabilang side, the Giant Lanterns did not hope to be playing in the playoffs. This was what Coach Eric Gascon told me for this season. They do not have a player who is above the pedestal and everyone expected to be embracing their role in the team.
missing 29 free throws at a 45. No tough defense, malaking factor resulting to their loss. Game three, they want to start fighting and physicality simula pa lang and expect that they will play tough. It's now or never para sa Pampanga. Governor Delta will not be present today. That's why the head coach will be Coach Alan Trinidad together with Coach Pedic De Matulak and Coach Richard Gascon. Mapagsak ba ang bataan o mawawala ang ningning na mga parol ng Pampanga? Ano sa tingin nyo, Migs and Javi? Well, I could not respond to those Kapampangan words, Sheila, but thank you so much for that report. That's how important this game is, Javi. Sheila had to report such a long, long report to everyone because of so much information to share in this game. And... If I may respond to one of those points, Pampanga, yes, they came into this season as underdogs. And that's an understatement because we did not know any of these players coming into the MPPL. They only got Jammer Hamito and Gary David in the middle of the season. But then again, they have shown us these promising talents led by one Archie Concepcion. Nobody expected them to finish the season very high in the Northern Division. These guys are virtually unknown players, but uh, guys like Archie Concepcion have stepped into the spotlight and embraced stardom here in the MPBL. Dombera will miss from downtown. It's 8-6 to six early in this game. Chris Dorado. A huge responsibility on the shoulders of Chris Dorado in this game. Dombera will miss. Rebound Dombera. Garcia looking ahead. MJ. Huge strides from him. A lot of time on the shot clock. Five and a half to go in the first frame. Vera. Bounce pass. Not enough space on that corner. They end up with Alex Ramos, who misses on the layup. The second try is good. Basket and one. It may not have looked pretty, mix, but two points nonetheless still for Pampanga on that play. Alex Ramos getting that ball. Offensive rebound in the putback. Two plus one special coming up for the big man. Alex Ramos had six points and 11 rebounds in game number two. Very vital in terms of rebounding for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns with si Alex Ramos. Eight all-hour score. Torado. He still has Gabawan, Bilugan, Bondok, and Sombero on the floor. Reggie on the drive. That's a great move, but it's too strong. We run on the other end. Apolonio. The drive, and he will proceed to the line. No numbers there for Pampanga, but nevertheless, Apolonio still forced the issue despite the disadvantage and was able to fish for a foul. The third against Jetro Sombero. You heard the crowd, and there's only one reason why they're roaring like that. It's Topeng Topeng Nagramas' debut in this game. Pass of Lindsay Gio Espuelas for Jetro Sombero, who now has three early fouls. Jason Apolonio will proceed to the line. He hasn't gotten his usual numbers because he is playing hurt. He twisted his ankle in game number one and he's still nursing that shoulder injury as this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, a subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. And it's important to note, makes that before Archie Concepcion, Concepcion uh, emerged as the top gun para sa Pampanga, Jason Apolonio was the top scorer para sa kanila. Apolonio misses the second free throw. They have a one-point lead here. Under five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Game number three. Winner will advance to the North Division semifinals. Great defense by Pampanga. Topping, hounding Dorado. And that's off of Lagrama. Pasok dito for the first time in this game. The all-star James Castro for the Bataan Risers. Ernest Reyes would also check in for Pampanga. Seeing as the Risers have been having an easy time attacking the basket, Pampanga has now extended the defense all the way out, pressuring the basketball. Restorado, great matchup against Topic Nagrama. Castro looking for a teammate. They go to Bondok. Three on the shot clock. Jong has to fire. That's a turnover. One and one. Dom Vera on the trailer. Reyes for two. You always love it when your big man runs the floor, especially on that secondary break. 
This time out is brought to you by Embassy Whiskey. Chill muna tayo. That is the trademark of the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Run and gun. Run and gun. Mapa point guard, mapa shooting guard, all the way to that center position. 11 to 8, our early score. Inside the Brengia Convention Center, all the way from San Fernando, Pampanga. We would like to give our thanks to Deputy Speaker Congressman Don Gonzalez, Team Owner Manager AJ Gonzalez, City Councilor Brent Gonzalez, Board Member Micah Gonzalez, and Vice Mayor Rodin Gonzalez of Mexico. Our VIPs at the sidelines, as well as this guy, Coach Gerson Cabildes, scouting for the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. He will be the next opponent of whoever will win this matchup between Bataan and Pampanga. Always very diligent in uh, game preparation. It does coach Jerson Cabildes, despite the still immaculate record at this point of the season. Coach Jerson continues to put in the hard work that has bore fruit out of the wins that they've had this season. What a story it has been for Coach Jerson Cabildes. Did not make the playoffs in his first year, made the division finals in his second year. Now he has an undefeated team playing with him. It's 11 to 8. Field goal shooting natin. 3 out of 9 for Bataan. 4 out of 11 for Pampanga. RV bring us a crowd favorite wherever he plays. Bring us for 2. I love how RV took his time. First touch of the basketball. Assessed what the defense was giving him. Back down Ernest Reyes. And got off a soft floater for his first 2 points. The other end almost a turnover for Pampanga. La Grama against Dorado. Topping escapes and passes. Tom Vera bombs away. Outside sniping of Tom Vera in this series has really been big for Pampanga. It has given them that production from beyond the arc, and it is very much needed, especially with the Giant Lanterns playing a lot of driving basketball inside that shaded area. There's that drive from Topeng Lagrama, giving it up to his longtime teammate na si Tom Vera. Matagal na pong magkasama yan, 7-8 years. And Tom Vera, you mentioned how vital his 3-point shooting is. He was 4 out of 5 in game number 1, scored 18 points. But in game number 2, he did score 14 points, but he was 1 out of 8 from downtown. Lagrama, wide open. Back-to-back -back threes for Pampanga. Now, I'm very sure Pampanga does not expect Topping Lagrama to pile on the points, but they will happily have that if he was able to knock it down. That's a great block by Ernest Reyes. And you know, that is actually one of the most underrated aspects of Ernest Reyes' game. At some point in the season, he was consistently in the top 10 of that category. As you take a look at that three-point shot, the first one in this ball game for Topeng Nagrama. A few feet away from the three-point area, there's that block by Ernest Reyes. You like uh, Ernest Reyes coming off the bench, giving you that mobile big man who is able to move his feet on the defensive side and able to provide you offense, get up, put the ball on the floor and have that soft touch from the perimeter. 17 to 10 hour score now. Pampanga playing with Dom Vera, Topping Lagrama, Jammer Hamito, Ernest Reyes, and Mitchell Minus. Here's Topping against Ron Lastimosa. There's no natural point guard in the game for the Badan Risers. Topping, they go to Reyes. Drive to the left, seven on the shot clock. That's a turnover. 
He mentioned no point guard, a natural one on the floor for the Bataan Risers because Gilmer De La Torre has an injured shoulder. He is out for the playoffs. Bringas is denied inside, but they have one more chance. Here's James Castro, nine on the shot clock. Castro down the middle. He was hooked. It ends up with Lastimosa and on to Espuelas with the specialty of the house. You give him that shot, he's gonna knock it down nine times out of ten. That short jumper from the baseline. 17 to 12, two minutes and 12 in the opening quarter. That's a traveling violation against Mitchell Minus. Earlier, Jason Apolonio started for Pampanga. One of the guys also that is struggling para sa kanila is that guy who just committed that turnover, Mitchell Minus. Minus played 11 minutes, scored four points in game number one. Ten minutes only in game number two. And uh, it's good for you to mention that because at the start of the season, it was Minus and Apolonio. They were the one-two punch right. of Pampanga. 17 to 12, as we mentioned, Espuelas looking for Castro. James, left side, step back. That short, rebound Reyes. Archie Concepcion is back in the ball game. Oh, good cut. And the layup. Doesn't matter if you have everybody, almost everybody back on defense, but if you don't stop the cutter, and that was Archie Concepcion able to get freely to the lane for that left-handed finish. Bringas looking for it once more. This time against Amito. Good defense by Jammer. Five on the shot clock. Lastimosa will step back. In and out. Rebound Archie. Fans are screaming here. They do not have the numbers. Trailer. Reyes. No foul. Dom Vera. Wide open. Just couldn't get it to fall. And it ends up with Bataan. Here's Castro. James gets it back. A lot of time here. Castro with the drive, bumping into three giant lanterns. Remember, Castro has back spasms and a wrist injury. He has to be careful. Now there's a foul against RB Bringas on the swipe. This place is just roaring. I can, we can barely hear ourselves right. inside the venue mix. But on the, on the previous offensive set for Bataan, James Castro that was a forced play by him, being met by three defenders and failing to kick it out to an open teammate. For sure, there was someone wide open. And here, Archie Concepcion, that pitch to Ernest Reyes. That's the recognition and the thrust by Concepcion, giving it to his big man ahead near the basket, able to draw the foul. And that's because Reyes ran the floor once more for Pampanga. Again, no coach Dennis Delta Pineda in this game, but surely they do have the tools as their coaching staff remaining at their bench 19 to 12 under a minute in the opening quarter game number three do or die between pampanga and bataan 12 on the shot clock lastimosa they go to castro that's a lot of space james just can't convert still scoreless here lagrama oh that's a good fake just short for topping the other end we go espuelas tough pass Kick out. Lastimosa. Back to Castro. Can he finally make one? That's short again. Just it's out his night. It's obvious that wrist is really bothering him, Mix. You can see all the follow through. Hindi niya talaga mabendan todo todo, and it's really affecting his release. It hurts so much more when the injured wrist is your shooting hand, and you can see it really taped up for James Castro. 19 to 12, 11 seconds remaining in the first.
We bring you this epic move of the game in partnership with OKBet on the win. Topping Lagrama, finding the cutter, their all-star Archie Concepcion. Again, that guy scored 21 points on 8 out of 13 shooting. Very efficient from the field in game number one. Just not the same case in game number two where he had six turnovers, four fouls, and only scored 12 points. But you can just imagine the responsibility on the shoulders of both Topping Lagrama and Archie Concepcion in this game. They're playing for survival in game number three. Six seconds in the first. Lagrama at the corner. Three-pointer number two. And that will end the first quarter for game number three here in San Fernando, Pampanga, just the way they wanted it to. That's the third time they left Topic Lagrama wide open from three-point country. And he is now two out of three from downtown. Alex Ramos able to get his touches, knocking down that top jumper from the perimeter. Chris Torado, upon his exit, gumulo na ang obensa ng Bataan. Then again, he's the only natural point guard that the Bataan Risers have left on their lineup. That's why it's going to be a big challenge for them, especially on the road. The other point guard, this time from Pampanga, stepping up, hitting two three-pointers in the first quarter in Topping Nagrama. He doesn't have any hair color anymore. It's, da it's back to black because this is business for Topping Nagrama and the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. 22 to 12 after one. Deputy Speaker, Congressman Don Gonzalez, City Councilor Brent Gonzalez, Team Owner, Manager A.G. Gonzalez, Board Member Micah Gonzalez, Vice Mayor Rodin Gonzalez, Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, Vice Governor Lilia Nanay Pineda, and Board Member Mylene Pineda. Sila po ang ating mga VIPs here in San Fernando, Pampanga. Again, we thank you so much for everything that you have given this Pampanga Giant Lanterns program. This is just so wonderful. Game number three, jam pack once more inside the Benguia Convention Center. Bataan and Pampanga fighting for survival as you take a look at the three-point shooting in the first. Zero out of six for the risers, three out of eight already for the Giant Lanterns. And we have to note, Mix, that when Pampanga is shooting well from downtown, nanalo sila. That's what happened in game one. They were nine out of 19 from three-point country. And in game two, only three out of 20 from the outside. So if they are able to hit their stride, which they have been able to do so far, that's why they've been able to establish this 10-point lead. They can be sure of a victory here. It's also important to note just how often these Pampanga Giant Lanterns shoot their threes. One out of four possessions, it's a three-pointer launch by Pampanga. That's why it's a good point for you to mention the difference in their three-point shooting. RV bring us getting the foul and getting some booze. Remember, Javi, in the regular season, Pataan played here in this very venue. They only lost by a couple of points, had a chance to bring it into overtime. And uh, in that game, RV bring us emerged as the main contra vida for the Bataan Risers. Well, all his career, that's really what his role has been. Always the villain on the team. And uh, he has embraced that and he has flourished in it. And uh, he has uh, become that once again for Bataan this season. Bring us missing on the gimmies. 22 to 12. RV is working with Espuelas, Lastimosa, Bondok, and Castro in the second. The other end, Concepcion playing with Garcia, Hamito, Maliari, and Lagrama. Garcia, they go to Topping. Seven on the shot clock. Topping has to escape this. Screen up top. 
topping Lagrama off to the right. It's rebounded by Jong Bondo. Uh, hindi pwede masyado mawili si Topeng Lagrama shooting it from the outside. Yes, he's hit a couple of three-point shots, but that was a forced attempt. Lastimosa playing the point guard position. Jong Bondok will fire. He does have that range, but it, it is short. Lagrama looking ahead. They go to Archie against Espuelas. Back to Topeng. Thought about it. Two dribbles and the kick out. Concepcion in and out. Hamito, wala pa rin. And Bataan will get the board. Forward pass, Castro. It's too strong. So that's a turnover. Castro arguing that Pampanga tapped it outside. The risers can't get anything right, be it in the half court or on transition. That was a chance for them to get two points but the ball was stopped and eventually last touch laban pa dito sa riser so another turnover laban sa kanila you mentioned it has been a struggle for Bataan especially offensively when Chris Dorado took a breather in the first quarter still hasn't returned here Castro screen up top James still has it 14 on the shot clock Castro dancing driving and he is fouled. It's two free throws for the Astro Boy. It's going to be doubly, triply hard for James Castro uh, to get points up in this game because dahil nga hindi uh, magaling yung kanyang wrist and he's not able to release that ball on that jump shot. Mapipilitan siya to uh, resort to dribble drive movements and break down his defender. So let's see if he can sustain this throughout the whole game. What do you think is harder? The wrist injury or the back injury? Actually, it's both because... The, the wrist injury hampers your shooting. Yung back naman, yung, kaya, yung movement mo, yung speed mo, yung explosiveness mo. Which is also what he's known for. As this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand the Pilipinas. James Castro is only shooting the ball at an 18% clip in this series. He has made five shots out of 27. That is very low, very uncharacteristic for the leader of Bataan. 22 to 13. Archie Concepcion. Amito asking for it. Instead, it's MJ Garcia. Two point guards on the floor now. Lagrama. He's hoisting up these three pointers. We don't really see this a lot. Lagrama and Garcia on the floor at the same time. Topping goes straight to the board. John Kapulong will check in for the first time. The usual starter for Pampanga as you take a look at this replay. That swipe by Toping Lagrama who just lost space. But good effort from him. Clean swipe on the basketball right there. Stopping the easy attempt on the fast break para sa Bataan. Balik dito, Jason Apolonio. And Dom Vera for Pampanga. Bring us looking up. 10 seconds to work with. Against Kapulong. That's a great matchup. Bring us turning red. And he's called for a walk. What a gallant stand right there at the post by Capulo. Instant impact. Kakapasok palamang. He was able to stop RV Bring us from getting two points in the post. Just stood his ground and forced that traveling violation. Rick Gallardo will check in for the first time. That guy fresh off of. Uh, Doing his duty, his service with the army. Pasok din ulit si Jamil Gabawan. Turnover story natin 5 to 4 in favor of the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. 22 to 13, folks. 7 minutes and 13 in the second. Here's Don Vera. They go to Capulo. This guy also has black hair now. Neutralizing it alongside Topping Lagrama. Vera will miss. Ball outside in favor of Pampanga. Babalik na po si Chris Torado for Bataan. The risers have to put up a team effort in terms of going for those rebounds. It's not just supposed to be one guy. Everybody has to pitch in because it, they have been giving a lot of second chance opportunities to Pampanga. John Capulong and Rick Gallardo were up in each other's faces. It's too early for Valentine's here, folks. <laughs> but these, you, these two young guns just happy to be in the MVP, and especially Rick Gallardo, who we missed for a very long time in this league. Referee is going to review 
if there was unnecessary contact. Well, malapit na kasi Christmas mix, kaya nag-exchange uh, gift na na maaga itong dalawang big band. You know what? Speaking of Christmas, on the way to the Brenga Convention Center, you will see those paroles. Uh, kung saan kilala ang Pampanga, ang San Fernando. It's very beautiful to see, inspiring the Christmas spirit. See the alt altercation here? Ooh, may siko, palitan, mula kina Gallardo and Capulo. Sabi lang siguro nila na miss nila yung isa't isa. <laughs> Double technical tayo between Gallardo and Kapulong. Nagparamdam lang, kaso nahuli ng referee natin. <laughs> so balik tayo sa baseline for Pampanga. Don Vera working with Jason Apolonio, John Kapulong, MJ Garcia, and Alex Ramos. Very lengthy lineup. As for Bataan, they have Chris Torado, Rick Gallardo, Ron Lastimosa, James Castro, and Jamil Gabawan. 13 on the shot clock here. Here's Apolonio. They go to MJ. Down to 8 seconds. Ramos. Kick out. Apolonio. He loves this. First three-pointer in the ball game for Jason Apolonio. Has now equaled his total in the whole series mix. Apolonio played 8 minutes in the first game. 7 minutes in the second game. Certainly a lot more minutes in game number 3 for the former leading scorer of Pampanga. Torado gets it back. That's a foul against MJ. Much more quality looks at the basket right now for Batan that Chris Torado is back on the floor. But Pampanga has continued to play exemplary defense despite uh, the risers getting into the lane and Torado able to attract the defense. They have been rotating well and prevented easy shots. Torado, we mentioned 18 points per game in this series. He is playing his best brand of basketball in the whole season. Remember, at some point, he was out of the rotation. Sina Gilmer de la Torre and bibigyan ng minuto. Torado kept fighting back, kept proving his worth. And now here he is, emerging as the new star for Bataan. That's Double just the team. mark of a true professional mix. Right. Pass inside. Kapulong is rejected. That's what Rick Gallardo can do for you. Scramble here. Counter turnover. And then another one. Foul given up by Don Vera. Vera pointing that there was one guy ahead of him. That's why there was no advantage for Bataan. I thought Ricky Dandan vehemently demanding for that advantage foul. Our referees are reviewing it right now on the instant replay. Again, the rule, if you're not going for the ball, it's an obvious flagrant one. Looks to be an ordinary foul here. Coach Ricky Danan is very upset. But it will be two free throws here because Pampanga is already in the penalty. At in insist talaga na there was no play on the basketball. Makikita natin dito. There's the tap. And then Chris Torado able to break away. Don Vera barely able to touch him for that foul. The frustration written all over Coach Ricky Dandan right now. By the way, let me just correct myself. We do not call them flagrant fouls anymore. We call them unsportsmanlike fouls. That's correct. That's very important to note because we would never imply that our players are dirty on the floor. Chris Torado missing the first free throw. Batan is down by 10, 6 minutes and 6 in the second. You mentioned though in game number 2, they were playing catch up against Pampanga. So let's see if uh, it, it will hold through in this game if it will be the same result and they will end up on top but in a game three makes with their backs against the wall and playing away sa home court ng kalaban when you are down by this much at this point you want to make sure that you climb back ngayon pa lamang you cannot afford to climb back at the latter stages kasi doubly triply mas nakakapagod yan and of course, Pampanga is wary of that as well. They do not want to give up 
that momentum for Bataan. Foul given up by Rick Gallardo. It was a definite hit from him. Natamaan talaga si John Kapulong, who will now proceed to the line. Remember, at some point in the season, we, I, I mentioned the hair colors. Kapulong had blonde hair, had orange hair at some point. Sabay sila ni Toping Nagrama, nagpapakulay ng buhok. Pero kitang-kita mo naman, seryosong-seryoso na ngayon sa playoffs. Yeah, well, I guess black means business para sa kanila. Unfortunately, free throws could not be converted here by both teams in the second. Torado escaping. Good feed. Oh! Dombera almost got the swipe, but it's a foul against him. The ability of Chris Torado to leave his defender in the dust, get into the lanes, attract the defense, and drop it off to his big man. Look at that. Blowing by Topping Lagrama. Slight hesitation, a little pick from Jamil Gabao and helped him break away. And the Gallardo was able to go up. Slightly blocked, but fouled. However, missing on the first free throw. Five out of 14 already for Bataan in this game from the line. Sorry, that's five out of 13 and three out of nine for the Giant Lanterns. That's definitely not what we want to see. Both teams shooting below 50% from the line. And remember, Javi Skota is 80% supposedly. Exactly. And you know, in a game like this, you want to be able to cash in on those freebies. What a cross. La Grama to Apolonio. Same angle, different result. But Hamito will get the board. One more chance here for Pampanga. Jason, the drive and the kick. It ends up with Lagrama. Five on the shot clock. Splitting the D. Hook shot is good. Good rotation already by Bataan. Getting on those drives by the Giant Lanterns. However, but allowing Toping Lagrama na makatakas dun sa shaded area and get one up in the middle of the paint. Take a look at that move. Lagrama splitting the defense, going right. Then there's that hook shot from him. This guy with eight points already in this game. Remember, he has struggled at the latter part of the season due to a lot of turnovers on his side. And even in the series, Lagrama with five turnovers in game one, four turnovers in game number two. But you can definitely, definitely sense the change in this guy. Very much motivated. And he got his confidence back after playing a couple of good games for Pampanga. Yeah, his role has really changed here para sa kanila from being the starting point guard para sa kanila when he entered this squad from being in a supporting role and providing that impact from the bench. And he's very much uh, uh, very able to do that because of his scintillating dribble moves just like that. However, just unable to drop down that shot from three-point country. But he gets the crowd into it, especially when they play here on their home floor. He's not even a homegrown of Pampanga. Exactly. And yet he is a crowd favorite. Battle for the loose ball. Good tap by Gallardo. Gabawan will kick it out. Lastimosa. That's tapped away. Bataan down by nine. They will inbound from the sideline. The activity of Pampanga on the defensive end is just amazing right now. Topping whatever efforts Bataan has. Referee just clearing that call amongst themselves just to be sure. 27 to 18. Baseline inbound here. James Castro working with Gabawan, Lastimosa, Torado, and Gallardo. 17 to work with. Castro, screen up top, the spin, the pass, Gabawan creating space. Oh, that's a tough angle. Castro asking his big man to shoot that basketball. It has been very, very tight para sa Bataan. Baseline inbound again, this time from the other angle. Gabawan will send it in. Torado, screen by Castro. Torado, left side. The short, Gallardo could not get the tip. Another chance. Castro's turn. And he will proceed to the line. A rare a second chance opportunity right there for the risers. Gallardo and Gabawan working hard on the glass to keep it alive. Para sa kanilang kupunan and Castro able to cash in on that drive with the foul. 
James Castro proceeding to the line. Had 11 points in game number one, six points in game number two. First one is good. We mentioned only 18% from the field for James Castro. Let's take a look at his free throw shooting. Five out of six in game number one. And then in game number two, he was two out of two. So at least, maganda yung porcento niya sa linya. 27 to 19 here, four minutes before halftime. Nagrama against Torado. Good swipe. That's a steal. Castro looking ahead. They go to Torado, running the floor. Hook shot, short. Great effort by Gallardo. And they will retain possession. They're allowing a Torado to get into the lane, but there's always that help defense to be able to get in front of him. And they're covering the shooter that is Ron Lastimosa. So, but uh, not having any chance to get an attempt from downtown. The scoring has been very low in this quarter. Lastimosa. Two players defending him. They go to Castro. Four seconds. James Castro. No good. Castro asking for that foul. Not given to him. Oh, what a steal. Chris Torado. Great sequence from him. Just imagine how much effort Torado's putting in for Pataan on both ends of the floor. Gabawan will fire. In and out. Could have been a big one for them. Frustrating right there. Nothing falling for Bataan. They're still down by eight points. Garcia. Helped by Gabawan. Good defense. Jamil being chased down. Not anymore. That's two points for Gabawan. Leading by example, it was Jamil Gabawan. It's game three. He's leaving it all on the floor right now, forcing that turnover and running the length of the court to get that layup. We mentioned Jamil Gabawan is the only champion in this lineup of Bataan. But remember, when he got that title, he was out with an injury for San Juan. James Castro got hit. No foul, but it's still two points for the Astro Boy. That should have been a foul. There was a clear hit on the head as he went for that reverse on the left side. But Jamil Gabawan, give credit to him for affecting the past couple of plays on that first try. He was the one who finished those two points. And Dunsa next naman was able to force that turnover once again and pitch it ahead to his point guard, James Castro, who was able to get that reverse over Archie Concepcion. That's his all-star teammate, that's the Archie Concepcion. This is actually pretty scary for Bataan. James Castro now getting his momentum in the second quarter. The lead is down to four. Bouncing back has been the story for Bataan in this series. They bounce back in game number two to get that victory after being down multiple times. Same story as well for RB Bringas in this series. Two points lamang sa game one para sa kanya and bouncing back plus 14 in the scoring department in game two, helping them get the victory. Right now, his production very much needed as well. He cannot settle for less than the double-digit advantage here in this game, he has to be able to deliver in scoring. It is the RV Bringas. RV Bringas currently taking a breather. We have a report coming in from Chila Salaysay. Yes, Migs, from a bench player who's always ready to becoming a kuya, yan ang role na ginagampana ni RV Bringas. Binanggit niya na ang challenge, lalo na sa kanilang mga veterano, ay kung paano igagayad ng mga rookies at patunayan na kaya nilang makipagsabayan sa ibang teams dito sa MPBL. From only two points and four rebounds, noong game one, RV was able to contribute 16 big points and rack up 13 rebounds closer to his season average. Sabi ni RV, mas ginaganahan siyang maglaro kapag maraming nanonood at nagagalit sa kanya. 
ito ang nagiging motivation niya on the floor playing here in Pampanga. Well, it will definitely a booster for RV pero we'll see how he will respond as there's no limit on what he can and will do for his team to rise this game three. Balik sa inyo. Thank you, Sheila. Yep. He loves to be the villain. Itong si RV bring us. And you know what? We even asked him before this game. RV, kumain ka na ba? Ang sagot niya lang sa atin? Ito, kakain pa lang ako during this game. And you know what he meant. Right now, he's gonna have to prove that because Bataan is still down by seven points. Archie Concepcion, no good. And Bataan with a chance to score here, down by seven. Lastimosa, they go to Castro. Now he's heating up. James Castro from downtown. All it took was for him to see that ball go through the basket. A couple of baskets down the lane in fast break. And now that release looking a lot better from three-point country. It's a beautiful cut by Don Vera. Just no conversion. Castro running the floor. There you see the momentum for James Castro now with nine points all in the second quarter. Uh, despite the injuries that he's having, he's running on pure adrenaline right now. And all is all he is thinking of right now is to do everything in his power to get this win para sa kanya. Oh, that's a great steal by Gabawan. Just could not convert. Counter for Pampanga. Don Vera trying to create space. No conversion. Takpo sa kabila. One guy ahead. And that's going to be an easy two for Jamil Gabawan. We are tied at 30 in game number three. They call it cherry picking, but very wise of Jamil Gabawan to stay there and wait for that basketball to end up with him. Alam niyang wala makakababa ng depensa dun to challenge him for those easy two points. I'm not sure if Gabawan is hurt, but he was limping on his way down and he had to give up that foul in order to be subbed out. John Bondok will check in, but we take a look at the sequence for the Bataan Risers. There's that forward pass. Gabawan, after he got that steal, just couldn't convert. But then it's retribution for him as he ties things up 30 all with 35 seconds remaining before halftime. Archie, drive and kick. Ernest's turn. Reyes inside. That's short. Second try is good. You get blocked, doesn't matter. You don't give up on the play. And that's exactly what Ernest Reyes did there. Got the ball after he was swatted away and went up. No defense on the second try. Great effort. Never give up, as we mentioned, especially in the playoffs. Pampanga badly needed that basket after this erase by the Batan Risers. Pampanga was already up in double figures in this match. But right now, it's only a single possession ball game. Back inside the Ben Gao Convention Center, jam-packed once more in San Fernando, Pampanga. They're fighting for survival here in the MPBL playoffs. The winner between the Giant Lanterns and the Bataan Risers will face Coach Gerson Cabildes and the Nueva Ecija Rice Vangers this coming Monday. Emmer Oreta, our Head of Basketball Operations, Joe Ramos, our Executive Officer, and Sadar Makantal, our Assistant Commissioner. They're all at the sidelines monitoring this matchup. The MPBL will continue tomorrow. Javi, you will cover in the Batanga City Coliseum. Monday, we go to Nueva Ecija, and then Tuesday, the crew will fly to Zamboanga once more. 32 to 30 with 24 seconds before halftime, a three second differential. Torado, down to 13. Good defense by Binuya. That's what he's known for. Torado, the drive. Bodies on the floor. Turnover is completed. Forward pass. Archie getting it back. Concepcion with the layup. One last chance here. Lastimosa will not be able to make a basket. What a last sequence for Archie Concepcion. 
That was only the second basket of the game by the Archie Concepcion, and uh, what we're seeing is a taunting, I believe, coming from Pampanga and uh, Ron Lastimosa took offense. I think it might hit, might have been a, a part of the coaching staff of Pampanga against Ron Lastimosa, and we saw Arby bring us exit the floor as the first guy to do it, and he got more boos and more ahs from the crowd. By the way, Jamil Gabawan is still limping as he exits here. That is going to be an issue for the Bataan Risers. They're already playing with a James Castro, an all-star who is not 100% in this match. And remember, Gabawan has been playing very well, especially in the second quarter. Yeah, and you know, Jamil Gabawan was responsible for his team getting back into this game. They were down by as much as 12 points here in the first half. But Jamil Gabawan, not just uh, on scoring, but defense as well, getting those turnovers para sa kanilang kopunan to get them to within four points at the half. The biggest lead was 12 points for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. They took control in the first quarter of this match. It was a very slow second quarter until the last couple of minutes before the emergence of James Castro and Jamil Gabawan. We mentioned this is the judgment day. It is do or die for both Bataan and Pampanga. You can feel it, the sense of urgency in the eyes of Archie Concepcion who gave us that last sequence. 34 to 30 hour score in game number three.
kayo pa rin ay nakatutok sa OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League and this is Game 3 of the North Division Quarter Finals sa pagitan ng Pampanga at ng Batani this halftime two gentlemen will be joining me and on my right that is Sir Erwin Oximoso the LGO coordinator of Batani and on my left of course is Councilor Brenz Gonzalez City of San Fernando pero unahin ko muna si Sir Sir uh, balita ko actually ko nagbalita sa akin ito na totally nire renovate ang Batani People Center this time yun if there's a uh, possibility na makuha nyo itong laro na to, meron po pa pagkakataon na doon tayo maglaro? Yes po, kaya yung uh, sitwasyon namin ngayon talagang bawal ng matalo. So lahat gagawin para po uh, umabot kami sa bagong renovate na Bataan People Center. So nagpapasalamat na rin po ako doon sa Orion na siyang nagpagamit nung unang uh, uh, home court. So ngayon po, kung talagang papalari, nataabot sa dulo. So mga taga-bataan na matagal nang nainip, na makapanood. So ito na po siguro yung pagkakataon natin, samahan lang po natin ang dasal para umabot muli tayo sa Bataan People Center. Uh, yung pagre-renovate ng uh, aming home court, hindi lamang basta mapaganda, kundi uh, mas makap makapag-host pa ng mga malalaking event, malaking paniga, at ang talagang uh, purpose ng aming probinsya, makapag-host ng mga international game o kung ano man pong event. Tayo po ngayon na nagbalik na nga, uh, we are close to the normal. Nako, marami pong nag-aabang. Meron po ba kayong uh, mensahe pa o gustong pasalamatan? Uh, Unang-una, sa lahat ng mga nandirito, magandang gabi po sa inyo, mga taga-Pampanga. At syempre, sa lahat po ng mga taga-Bataan na dumayo pa rin dito para magbigay ng suporta. Unang-una, andyan po ang aming Congresswoman ng 3rd District ng Bataan, Congresswoman Gila Garcia. Syempre, sa lahat ng bumubuo ng kamay ako, especially kay Sir Goody Ilagan, kay uh, Attorney Gary Palmero at kay Sir Luis Uh, Balinsuela. At syempre, advance. Happy birthday na rin po sa aming governor, Joe Ed Garcia, na on the way na rin po ngayon para magbigay po ng suporta ang aming governor, sa vice governor namin, Chris Garcia, at sa lahat ng mga taga-bataan. At advance, happy birthday na rin kay Sir Tito Garcia and my wife, tsaka sa anak kong hindi nakasama ngayon, kay Erwin Luther. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, uh, Sir Erwin Oximo. So, pero mapunta na ako dito kay Councilor, Councilor Brent since sumali yung Pampanga Giant Lantern Season 2, if I'm not mistaken. You and your family has been, you know, one of the biggest supporters ng team. Pero what makes this team unique for this season? Well, uh, unang-una, uh, very unique yung team namin ngayon dahil uh, hindi kami kumuha ng mga ex-pro, ex-PBA players hanggat sa dulo na ng season. Uh, tapos, Uh, kami lang ata yung team na governor, yung head coach namin na si Governor uh, Dennis Delta Pineda. Kaya uh, maganda yung pag-manage ng team namin ngayon at uh, sakto yung uh, pagbalanse ng mga veterano at ng mga batang players dito sa Pampanga. Kaya uh, umabot kami sa number 4 at ngayon hopefully uh, malagpasan namin yung round na ito. At syempre sa lahat ng mga kabale na sumusuporta dito sa inyo at nanonood ngayon on their, uh, at home, meron ka bang gustong sabihin? Uh, Unang-una po, nagpapasalamat ako sa lahat ng mga kabalen. Dakala, dakala, salamat po kaya kayo. Sana po hindi ito ang huling laro namin. Uh, gusto kong pasalamatan ang governor natin, Dennis Delta Pineda, uh, Vice Governor, Nanay Lilia Pineda, Congressman Don Gonzales, uh, Board Member Micah Gonzales, uh, Board Member uh, Maylin, at uh, sa lahat po ng mga nanunungkula na nandirito ngayon, uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, of course, Councilor Brands, of course, and uh, Sir uh, Erwin Oximoso ng Bataan. Yun, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang bakbakan, of course, sa uh, third and fourth quarter, yan, sa pagbalik ng Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League.
tayo pa rin ay nanonood dito live here at the Brenzy Kiao Convention Center. At uh, tingnan naman natin ang mga komento ng ating mga kaliga sa ating social media accounts. Unang-una na nga dito si uh, Faith Marshall Guerrero. The third, sabi niya, go, 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 Chris Torado and Topeng Lagrama. Point guard din siguro ang laro nito. Sumunod naman dyan, first mula kay Siling Palay, shooting, teamwork, defense is the key, bataan. Ayan, sigurado ako naririnig na yan mga players, of course, at reminder din niya ni Coach Ricky Dandan. At galing naman kay Grayson Lagman. Kahit hukayin niyo yung bakod niyo, di matatalo, Pampanga. Wow, solid ka pala neto ang ating kaliga. And last but not the least, of course, galing kay Zoren Ortega Flores. Pag natalo pang pangga dito, di na ako kakain ng kusino. Sigurado ka ba dyan, Zoren? Sarap niyan, kasama ng sinangag at itlog. At kung gusto nyo nga mapansin ang inyong mga shoutouts, of course, don't forget to uh, use the hashtag MPBL Playoffs 2022. Mix and happy? Thank you, Sheila. And thank you so much to everyone who has commented. Do continue to share your thoughts. Maraming salamat sa inyo panunod. 34 to 30 hour score, halftime of game number 3 inside the Brengiao Convention Center from San Fernando, Pampanga. The winner of this match will proceed to the semifinals of the North Division, going up against the undefeated Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. And in this game, we saw a first quarter dominance from the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. They led by 10 points after one. Their biggest lead was 12 at 25 to 13. But then, some brilliance mula kina James Castro and Jamil Gabawan in the latter minutes of the second quarter to pull in to just four points against Papaga. That time, uh, towards the latter part of that second quarter, as you mentioned, Mix, really uh, gave Bataan the boost they needed because they were really struggling. The defense of Pampanga was really on them and the Giant Lanterns prevented a lot of easy attacks para sa Bataan Risers which uh, really dwindled ang kanilang field goal percentage. But Jamil Gabawan was able to step up para sa kanila. Sabi na nga natin kanina, he's the only a guy on this team with championship experience winning it for the Sun One Knights in the inaugural season. So he has really been leading by example para sa kanilang kupunan in trying to herald them to a victory in today's game and uh, advance to the division semifinals. Ito ang uh, numbers natin at uh, both teams still struggling from the field in this game. Uh, Ang uh, Pampanga and Batan, they haven't really shot over 40% in this series. So it has really been a game of defense para sa parehong kupunan. Uh, alam naman natin yan coming into this series, both teams with similar play styles. They have that leg, they have that athleticism which uh, really counteracts and uh, cancels out each other. Kaya naman talaga uh, nagkakatalo with teams are able to knock it down. And Pampanga has been doing well from the outside. 5 out of 16 right now, 1 out of 11 lamang. Para sa bataan. So the risers have to be able to knock down their three-point shots if they want to be able to get the lead. And uh, James Castro has been doing very well. Points lamang dyan ang bataan because of that spurt uh, towards the latter part of the first half. And of course, that spurt was led by James Castro at nine points. Mentioned Jamil, Gaba Jamil Gabawan with six points, four rebounds, and two steals. Under his name, Chris Torado and Jetro Sombero with four points as well for Bataan. As for Pampanga, Topping Nagrama with two three-pointers and the hook shot, leading to eight points for himself. Dombero with six, Archie and Ernest Reyes with four points each for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. He mentioned the three-point shooting in the statistics. They're still shooting under 33%, which is relatively low, but they'll take it over that. 3 out of 20, 15% in game number 2 that cost them that game in this very venue. Then again, Javi, one of the storylines, Pampanga was in control multiple times in game number 2, but Bataan was able to pull off a comeback, so they have to be very careful here. So the question that is that we're waiting to have an answer of today is, can the Giant Lanterns have that finishing kick to be able to vanquish itong Bataan Risers? Na alam naman natin talaga, really uh, epitomizes that never say die attitude they will continue to grind out and uh, despite not looking pretty in a lot of possessions whatever works for them they will take it as long as gumagana by the way speaking of gumagana it seems like okay na po si Jamil Gabawan his leg is okay it was wrapped up with ice as he entered halftime but he signaled to us that he is 100% good to go here 
is going to be very vital in the second half for the Bataan Risers. There's a technical foul here against the Bataan Risers because we saw how we ended that uh, first half. Ron Nasimosa having words with the coaching staff of the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Archie converting on that free throw. He will begin the second half with Jammer Hamito, Alex Ramos, Jason Apolonio, and MJ Garcia. It's very tall for him, or for them. lineup As for Bataan, there was an, an unsportsmanlike call against Pampanga. That's why it's two free throws for Ron Lastimosa in ball possession. But that continues to struggle from the charity stripe in this game. Before that, 50%, 9 out of 18 now, 9 out of 19. Getting it back to 50% with that free throw by Ron Lastimosa. Pampanga is not doing that well either. Only 40% at the stripe, 4 out of 10. It's 35 to 31 as we begin the second half of play. Chris Dorado beginning with James Castro, RV Bringas, Jethro Sombero who's playing with three fouls, and Reggie Bilugan. Sombero diving for that basketball. They get it back. Bringas inside. Oh, ho, ho, what a block by Hamito. Foul inside. In possession are the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. A couple of opportunities there for Batan, almost, but not quite para sa kanila. They couldn't get two points, or seeing here, Jetro Sombero coming back on the court para sa risers. He picked up three early fouls in that first half that forced him to sit out majority of the first and second periods. No conversion here for Pampanga. Castro is feeling it. The Astro Boy back at it again. No! What a layup from James Castro. That is not a move of somebody who has back spasms. Floating in the air, reversing, getting points on the other side of the basket. That was a traveling. The other end, Apollono knew that he was going to miss it. Amito loses space here. Bataan will get possession. A chance for them to tie or get the lead. As we bring you this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Ben on the win, we call this some 24 karat magic in the air from James Castro. Epic matchup in mid air para sa parehong player ng North All Stars, but that time James Castro getting the better of his All Star teammate, Nasi Archie Concepcion, both athletic high flyers. Oh, Torado got hit hard by Jammer Hamito. Well, we're going to hear it from the Papanga crowd, but you cannot blame Chris Dorado for what happened to him. That's got to hurt. Let's see what happened here. There's that drive again. Torado able to leave his defender, which was MJ Garcia in that sequence, but running into a brick wall named Jammer Hamito. Hamito has not been himself. Pagpasok natin sa ating second half. Two turnovers, and right now, committing a foul on Chris Torado. It's a blocking foul against Jammer Hamito. Torado just got up now. Coach Ricky Dandan was looking for an unsportsmanlike foul, but it was not given to them. And again, we saw just how vital Chris Torado is to the offense of the Badan Risers. As soon as he came out in the first half, everything slowed down for them. Oh, he is, after all, their only pure point guard with Gilmer De La Torre is sitting out due to injury. That's why you get, I gotta give a lot of credit to Chris Torado for his Herculean effort in manning that one spot para sa bataan, orchestrating their offense. And pakita naman natin, when he's on the floor, it works beautifully para sa bataan. And he's doing it on both ends of the floor. Four steals as well for Chris Torado. The company is three assists and four points so far. Bring us. Turn around. No good. Rebound, Apolonio. Garcia will bring it down. Against Reggie Bilugan. Garcia pushing away his defender. No conversion. Chance back with Bataan. Only a single possession ball game. Torado behind the back. Good pass. Ooh, a lot of hits for RB Bringas. As Sheila mentioned, he loves to be the villain. Torado yet again able to attract 
Not one, but two defenders on that drive to the hoop. We saw their Jammer Hamito and MJ Garcia. Nobody helping the helper, Alex Ramos, left there behind RB Bringas. Well, that's why Pampanga, no recourse but to foul the big man. Referee, well, the referees are reviewing this. Referee John Albenas, as well as referee Ruben Agbalo. Referee Ruben now signaling to Richard Tampos. It is a hacking foul against MJ Garcia. Papasok dito si Toping Lagrama, who gave us a show in the first half of this match. MJ Garcia, we have not felt him in this game. Only two points, two rebounds, and two assists. That a far cry from the performance that he had in game two. 23.6 rebounds for MJ in game number two. Bring us taking down Archie Concepcion. He's going to help him up, though. Might have just been a matter of where Archie was falling down. Remember, these two were teammates in the All-Star game. Let's see what happened. Yeah, right. Sadyang dun lang lumanding si Archie. So you can't really blame RV bring us with that one. He couldn't stop his momentum going forward as Concepcion went for that steal. Well, at least for him, he helped Archie up and he admitted the foul immediately. Well, you know, despite Bataan not having that kind of fluidity that Pampanga has on offense, they have managed to take care of the ball better than the Giant Lanterns. Just like that. Turnover for Pampanga. Torado. Oh, good. Good run by Reggie Bilugan, who will now proceed to the line. Pampanga continues to let Bataan go off on transition. After a turnover, only a couple of Giant Lanterns were able to go back on defense, which forced the three-on-two situation right there. Textbook uh, execution right there by Torado, leaving it for the wing guy, Bilugan, who got fouled on the way up. It's like a fast-break drill on practice, right? Bilugan missing the first free throw. One more try for Reggie. But the United Sinagabi Ramirez, Huewe Medina, and Raymond Valenzona. I don't know, chatting ngayon, pinapabati kayo ni Richard Tampos. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. I'd also like to take this opportunity to greet uh, one of the former Pampanga players during the NBA days, na si Jerome Hersito. Wow. Gatang gabi sa inyo. Under eight minutes in the third, 35-34. Game number three, do or die for Pampanga and Bataan. Another turnover. Oh, that's not completed. Good recovery by Lagrama. Oh, pass was too high for Jammer Hamito. That is the third turnover in this third quarter para kay Jammer Hamito. He mentioned he's looking like he's not himself so far. But we only say that because we have such high regard for Jammer Hamito, especially in this season. Vital, vital recruit from the San Juan Knights. There's a foul here. Or was it just out of bounds? No foul called right there. Just a baseline out of bounds. Uh, uh, Alex Ramos was able to get away with that call. Nine seconds. Not call, rather. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Baseline inbound, as you mentioned. This time, it's off of Rick Gallardo. Turnover for Bataan. Uh, Jammer Hamito trying to atone for his sins. That time, getting the ball back to his team. Mampanga holding on to a solitary point lead. The grama. Again, there's that matchup against Chris Torado. You know, we can watch this all night long. Torado versus the grama. Very entertaining to see pint sized guards go at each other, especially with this magnitude of a game. Coach Louis Gonzalez regarded them as little giants here in the MPBL. Not just because La Grama is playing for the Giant Lanterns, but they play like giants. Just how skilled they are, just how entertaining they have been. Gallardo 
Good defense from him, but the recovery is there. Napaganda pa para kay Ernest Reyes. Every time Ernest Reyes steps onto the floor para sa Pampanga, he has given them a lot of impact because of his activity. Putting the ball on the floor, attacking the basket despite getting blocked on the initial try. Able to get it back and manufacture another attempt, cashing in on that secondary. That has been a trademark for this night para kay Ernest Reyes, those putbacks. 38-34 here. See that full court pressure from the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Torado exerting so much effort tonight as the lone point guard for Bataan. They go to Castro against Don Vera. Screen up top. See that pressure defense. Castro. No foul. Baseline inbound. Now James Castro has to be able to temper those attacks. Hindi pwedeng pilit lang niya ng ipilit. Because right now the defense has adjusted seeing that he's got his rhythm at the end of that first half. So now Pampanga trying to get in front of him and uh, having those active hands to be able to stop the attempts at the basket. Bataan down by four, eight on the shot clock. Under seven minutes in the third, Castro feet inside. That's a good cut. Basket and one for Jethro Sombero. Very rare in this game do you see Bataan getting offense from movement, not just ball movement, but also man movement. Castro able to bait with that fake and then passing it down to the right side. And Sombero timed that cut perfectly. However, just missing on that free throw. They're below 50%, 11 out of 23 from the line. Lagrama will fire. No good. Hoping Nagrama has given us so many attempts already from the three-point area. He is two out of seven so far. 38-36, a foul at the half-court line. That's against Toping Lagrama. Free throws again here. Penalty na ang ating dalawang kapanan. Again, we would like to thank Deputy Speaker Congressman Don Gonzalez, Team Owner Manager E.G. Gonzalez, City Councilor Brent Gonzalez, Board Member, the new mother, Micah Gonzalez, Vice Mayor Rudin Gonzalez, Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, Vice Governor Lilia Nane Pineda, and Board Member Mylin Pineda, our Pampanga VIPs, making it all happen inside the Brengia Convention Center. One point game. There's AM Gonzalez, the team manager. Or make that A.G. Gonzalez. A.M. is their younger sister. Shout out to her as well. Pushed by Lagrama. Two-pointer. His confidence did not waver despite missing a three-point shot on their previous offensive play. Still look for his shot. Pushing off and getting that separation to get that jumper off. Let's look at that again. A little head and shoulder fake, drive to the left using that right arm to get Torado out of the picture and all net on that elbow J. Unfortunately, this has been a problem all night long for Topping Lagrama. He's trying to body up Chris Torado, but he has been called for multiple fouls because of that same play, and he's up to four fouls now. Andre Garcia set to check in. Torado, second try. Seven points and four assists so far for the lone point guard of Bataan. Now I'm looking for uh, Pampanga to be able to set up MJ Garcia at that low block now that Torado is the one guarding him and seeing that there is an obvious advantage at that post. Garcia is the second tallest point guard in the league behind Joshua Gonzalez. That's a good play. Ernest Reyes finding Alex Ramos. 42-39, under six minutes in the third. Both teams fighting for survival. Castro against Don Vera. Couple of moves. Bounce pass. Turnover. It's not completed. One more chance here for Bataan. 
Take a look at what just happened here. Almost the same thing happened on the other end. Big man to big man. This time it's Reyes to Ramos. Sideline inbound, Reggie Bilugan will make that Gio as well as Dorado. Driving right, bounce pass to no one. You know, as good as Dorado has been in the series, turnovers, that has been a story for him as well. Ten turnovers coming into this matchup individually. Itong si Chris Torado, and that's turnover number 11 in this match as a team for Bataan. Yeah, but if you're Bataan, you can't really pin all that on him. He's the only point guard para sa iyong koponan. And because of his high usage rate in this series, he is really bound to put up those numbers in the turnover department. 39-42. Garcia will miss. Rebound, Pinuya. One more chance for Pampanga. Don Vera. Screen, Mulaki Reyes. The drive. Pass intercepted. That's another steal for Chris Torado. You know, as much as we've been talking about the high usage of this guy, Chris Torado, this guy's numbers and steals in this game has been really high. Already had four in the first half. So he's up to five now. That's his first one in the third. Pataan, still down by three here. Las Limosa now playing the point. Binuya guarding Castro. James looking for a teammate. Ten on the shot clock. Las Limosa screened by Gallardo. Oh, off the glass and in for Ron Las Limosa. Not really sure that was the shot that they were expecting, but they'll take it off the back. Right there, para kay Ron Lastimosa. And we have a deadlock now, 42 all. Garcia with a spin. Short on the one-hander. That's tapped away in favor of Bataan. Now the risers will have a chance to get the lead. This three-point shot is brought to you by Extreme One-Stop Shop Appliances. You saw the face of Ron Lastimosa. He himself was surprised with what he just did. At yun na po yung highlight natin. <laughs> Enough for you to be entertained. 42 all in the third frame. Four minutes here. Lastimosa back at it again. They go to Gallardo. Pass to Espuelas. That's not his usual range. And he misses from downtown. Binuya. Sidestep. Layup is good. There's a veteran reading the defense very well. Had that opportunity to go all the way and went up for those two points. Raymond Binuya is literally the homegrown of San Fernando Pampanga. And we witnessed that at the start of these playoffs. John Arenas, Rene Baicia, Choi Ignacio for Zamboanga. This guy, if he erupts for Pampanga, you can just imagine how big of a show it's going to be here in San Fernando. And he might just be realizing that he needs to do that para sa Pampanga ngayon as MJ Garcia has not really been the player that uh, he has been all throughout the series in this game. Raymond Benuya being the veteran that he is, somehow maybe realizing that he has to step up at this crucial moment of the game. Sombero missing on the free throw. Still a struggle for Bataan. 14 out of 28 now. Archie back in the ball game, working with Garcia, Binuya, Ramos, and Reyes. MJ, one-hander. Remember, he, he, he is used to playing that wing spot. Now he has a point guard with him in Raymond Binuya. That's only the second bucket of the game para kay Garcia. Tumalabas, Chris Torado against Raymond Binuya. Another matchup in these little giants. As a charge here against Chris Torado. Uh, Torado, in that play especially, trying to do a little bit too much to make things happen para sa Bataan. He has to be able to involve his teammates, move that ball around, and make the defense work. 
Great defense as well for Damon Binuya. That's what he's known for, his special defense. He is the team captain of Pampanga as their longest tenured veteran so far. MJ, that's off to the left. Binuya trying to save it, but it goes to Dorado. They go to Lastimosa as the trailer. That's too strong. Rebound Archie. Other end we go. Benuya. Hezi behind the back. Uh oh. He needs a teammate. 12 on the shot clock here. Archie. Screened by Ernest Reyes. Concepcion is fouled by Lastimosa. That means free throws for Archie Concepcion. Lousy foul right there, given up by Ron Lastimosa. Eight seconds left on the shot clock, and you already had Pampanga in a bind, but you just couldn't resist reaching in and bumping Concepcion. Let's turn you over to Sheila Salaysay. Sheila, go ahead. To be playing on his first year as a pro and representing his hometown both is a privilege for Archie Concepcion para makaabot sa playoffs na halos lahat rookies hindi inexpect ni Archie na makakarating sila dito sa hinaba ng liga tinanong ko si Archie Allen ang pinaka tumatak sa kanya sa experience niya dito sa MPBS sakgot niya when he missed his free throw and last shot ng game 2 dahil halos tatlong araw daw siya hindi nakatulog Determinado, lahat maglaro at mag-contribute dahil alam ni Archie, they have the mentality of being accountable and uh, responsible sa bawat role na ginagampanan ng bawat isa sa kanilang kumunan. Magbabalik pa rin ang Mahalaga Pilipinas Basketball League. Sheila Salaysay just reported about Archie Concepcion sleepless after the missed free throws and three-point shot in game number two. That's why it is almost but not quite for him. 12 points in game two. He's averaging 15.3 para sa Pampanga this season. Right now, di pa rin natin siya masyadong rabdab in this game. Only seven points to his name. And I believe for Pampanga to create even more separation, he has to assert himself more and prove to everyone else that he is Pampanga's top gun right now in this very moment. Ikanga, with great power comes great responsibility. As much as we have glorified Jason Apolonio and Mitchell Minus at the start of the season for Pampanga, now they have a new bona fide star in Archie Concepcion, and that means a lot of responsibility on his shoulders in these playoffs. Right now, Pampanga is up by 6, 48-42, two minutes to go in the third frame. Game number three. Ooh, that's a double dribble. <laughs> that slight nudge forced Lastimosa out of balance on that drive. Another turnover para sa bataan. Binuya working with Garcia, Concepcion, Reyes, and Ramos. Archie up top. Is this a zone by Bataan? Looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. Oh, pass inside. MJ to Ernest Reyes. Every time Ernest Reyes is in the vicinity of the basket, he always finds himself available for at least a shot attempt. An 8-0 run for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns after we were tied at 42 all. Torado in trouble here. 12 on the shot clock for Lastimosa. Uh-oh! That's another foul on Chris Torado as Raymond Binuya got the charge. Referees will review this though, just to be sure. Referee Rodel Brilla was the one who whistled. 50 to 42. 
And, uh, you know, Chris Dorado has faced that pressure defense all night long. Una, kay Toping Nagrama ngayon. Raymond Binuya naman. It has been a long, long night para kay Chris Dorado. Gave up that basketball to Ron Lastimosa. Didn't really have to do that because Binuya was not even trying to deny him because he was moving away from the play, moving on over to the weak side. Unfortunately, it happened in front of referee Rodel Brilla. It was an easy call for him. 81 seconds here in the third. Pampanga building momentum. Remember, they were up by 10 in the first quarter. But then Batan gave us a comeback. Reaching halftime. Garcia. That's a walk on the other end. The struggles continue para kay MJ Garcia. Batan is allowing him to put the ball on the floor, but they're meeting him just before Makabuelo siya to attack that basket. Still with that full court defense or the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Estimosa will bring it down against MJ Garcia. Very tough for Lorna Estimosa. And that's a turnover. No counter steal. Binuya will slow it down. Raymond dashing through. Binuya! Oh, a sorry miss. One more chance. 44 seconds, 12 on the shot clock. Archie Concepcion, the bona fide star. No good. Binuya goes down. Castro on the drive. Too strong. Battle inside. There's a foul against Pampanga. MJ Garcia matatawagan. Castro is on the floor. You've seen that a lot of times in this game, Javi. Yung mga strong drive to James Castro. That could look very risky to these Batan fans. Yeah, but because he's compensating because of the injuries na nararamdaman niya, minsan nung overcook niya yung kanyang mga attempts, just like that one, that was an easy one for him to make. Those are shots that he usually attempts. And that guy on the line, RV Bringas, if we mentioned earlier that Archie Concepcion has to assert himself, for Bataan, RV Bringas has to be that guy. Go in the post, dump it down to him, and make him feel that wrath inside the shaded area and another altercation just happened that was a weird one should we say because Sombero tried to pin Jammer Hamito at the barrier parang tinali niya ganun yung ginawa niya double foul here and that's number 4 on Jetro Sombero which is actually the bigger concern for Bataan Sombero has 6 points 5 rebounds in this game, forced to sit out once again uh, in the dying minutes, a moment rather, uh, this third quarter. But it is Jamil Gabawan who will return for Bataan, the guy who made the push alongside James Castro in the second quarter. 50 43, two second differential. Archie will try to close this one out. Double team. That's a turnover. From a man, they drop down suddenly into a 2-3 zone but uh, the two guys on top still relentless in pressuring the basketball which forced the turnover laban dito kay Archie Concepcion with 9.7 seconds remaining in the third quarter Bataan will have possession here down by 7 Gabawan will get it turnover story 19-15 to 15 in favor of Bataan Almost another one. It is completed. Pinuya, someone has to fire. Ernest Reyes will lose time. The risers missed the opportunity to cut the lead down to four points or five, which was the case entering the final frame in game two, where they ended up with that victory. Third quarter. It's concluded with a seven-point lead for the Pampanga Giant Lantern. Sheila mentioned physicality, energy, all the will in the world for these two teams coming into these, uh, to this matchup, this last game of the series. Bataan and Pampanga fighting for survival. When we return, we give you the fourth and final frame.
Again, we would like to thank Deputy Speaker Congressman Don Gonzalez, Team Owner Manager AJ Gonzalez, City Councilor Vince Gonzalez, Board Member Micah Gonzalez, Vice Mayor Rodin Gonzalez of Mexico, Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, Vice Governor Lilia Nanay Pineda, and Board Member Mylene Pineda, the VIPs of Pampanga. And we also have some more VIPs, Coach Gerson Cabiltes, alongside the rest of the coaching staff of the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards scouting tonight because the winner of this matchup between Bataan and Pampanga will travel to Palayan City this coming Monday to begin the North Division semifinals. Remember, today we are in Pampanga, tomorrow in Batangas, Monday in Nueva Ecija, and then Tuesday in Zamboanga. Patuloy po ang Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. Mix Gomez, Javi Palanya, and Sheila Salaysay at your service. Fourth and final frame in game number three. Partner scoring here on your screens. Bataan, down by 10 at the end of one, but outscoring the Giant Lanterns by six in that second frame and relinquishing a three-point lead at the end of three. RB bring us a pass to the front row and he apologizes immediately. Bring us starting the fourth frame. Oh no, Jamil Gabawan. That's, uh, I'm not sure if it was the same leg that he injured in the first half that was iced as he was walking towards the locker room. Definitely something that you do not want to happen for the Bataan Risers who are already playing hurt here. James Castro with back spasms and a wrist injury. Gilmer De La Torre is out of the playoffs because of a shoulder injury. You saw it. It looks like may natapakan, no? Si Jamil. Might not be the hardest of impacts, but definitely enough to hurt him. Yeah, because uh, it's already previously injured. Just a little nudge affected that leg, which forced him to go down. We hope he's okay. And for Batan, this is really scary because Gabawan has proved to be the spark plug every time that the risers need someone to provide that impact off the bench. Kanina, he was the one that uh, was able to make a game out of it. Uh, Dumikit sila uh, towards the latter part of that second quarter. But right now, they will need to look for someone else to be in that role. Could be Jong Bontok who hasn't showed up in this game. Could be their all-star RV Bringas as well. Those two are being joined by James Castro, Chris Torado, and Reggie Bilugan. The other end, Jason Apolonio is working with Raymond Binuya, Jammer Hamito, Ernest Reyes, and Don Vera. Reyes escaping. No basket, but it's two free throws for him. Bring us hearing it to the crowd once more. <laughs> once again, makes Ernest Reyes time that cut very well. Apolonio was situated on that low block. Nothing was materializing, was not looking for his shot. Reyes seeing that that was the situation, cut inside, and despite once again being denied the initial attempt, was relentless and got a secondary attempt at the basket. Ernest Reyes, not particularly a bright and showy name for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns, but he has always been very useful off the bench. Today, consistent na mga numero, and he's already nearing a double-double. 10 points and 8 rebounds. Coach Gerson Cabilte is still very serious at the sideline. Absolutely no emotion since the first quarter. You can only imagine what's going through his mind. Isama yan sa killer instinct na show off ng Nueva Ecija. Remember, we're just two days away from that North Division semifinals matchup. Bondo looking for Torado. Nine on the shot clock. Bataan down by eight. Chris Torado. Turnover. Vera against John Bondo. Tom Vera. Basket and one. Torado's asking for a tech here. Let's see what happens. Vera able to play the passing lanes very well. And you see that he really wanted that basket. Went up, stretched for that layup. And Jong Bondok 
could not reach the basketball to block him. Vera finishing and getting a three-point play opportunity. As the referees review this, let's get back to Sheila Salay's side. Sheila, go ahead. Hindi naging madali ang pinagtaanan ng pataan para makarating ng playoff. Sabi ni Coach Ricky, on the fly, both parties need to learn and adjust to the new system. For this quarter, they need to put pressure. Yan ang reminder ni Coach Ricky. And he specifically instructed RB Bringas to move and execute. An update sa condition ni Jamil Gabawan. He encountered or he had a right, right calf strain since Game 2. And, and uh, scale, pain, pain scale daw niya ngayon is 10 and hindi na daw on the floor for this game. Back to you. Well, a calf strain is not a joke in basketball. Run here again, Pampanga, Jason Apolonio. And the risers getting a dose of their own medicine. Pampanga has been down in fast break points throughout this game but they have been able to force turnovers here early in the final period and Dom Vera has been instrumental in making things happen in transition that time nadulas na sa kanya yung bola but Apolonio at the right place at the right time for two points a basket for Dom Vera and an assist as well on the break 55 to 43 eight minutes and 38 remaining in game number three We come back to you live from the Brangiao Convention Center and we're seeing the numbers of the consistent contributor, Dom Vera. We mentioned he struggled with his three-point shooting in game number two, but he still scored 14 points and grabbed five rebounds. Yeah, and actually now in this game, no, uh, before this couple of possessions that gave them this 12-point advantage right now, Vera has been struggling. Hit a couple of three-point shots in this game, but after that, he hasn't been able to find the bottom of the net. And actually, he hasn't been seeing the floor much before this moment. And right now, giving uh, his team much-needed separation laban dito sa bataan. Let's uh, get back to Sheila Salaysay with another report. Thank you, Migs. As a rookie, Dominic Vera has increased his numbers in the playoffs. Nakapaglaro ng isang season si Dominic sa San Sebastian, Manila, pero hindi natapos dahil sa family matters at dito na nga siya sa Pampanga nagtrabaho. Pero hindi nawala ang basketball kay Dominic dahil nabigyan pa rin siya na pagkakataon maglaro sa mga ligang labas at pro league kasama na nga ang MPBL. Sa ganda ng pinapakita ni Dominic, naniniwala siya na hindi man natupad ang mga pangarap niya nung una, hindi siya huminto dahil may tamang panahon para dito. Makes and happy. Beautiful report. Thank you, Sheila. That is what the MPBL is about, giving chances to these national caliber talents. Dom Vera missing from downtown. That guy's already 28 years old. As much as we talk about Pampanga being a young team, guys like Topping Nagrama, he's 29 years old. So they're up there. They already have their experience here in the Philippines. Now these guys have given Pampanga another kind of edge at the start of the season we saw the giant lanterns you know struggling with the youth that they had sa kanilang kumpunan but with the entry of Alex Ramos topping Lagrama and Dom Vera they have really given the giant lanterns a different kind of life at sama mo pa dyan, the emergence ni Archie Concepcion right well Dom Vera Alex Ramos and topping Lagrama all come from the same team from Quezon, in Tatlong Yan, that's why there's a lot of chemistry among them. And as for Archie Concepcion, he is just back home, playing for Pampanga. James Castro, missing at the line. It's a 12-point deficit for the Bataan Risers. And again, they're playing without Jamil Gabawan anymore in this game. And also no Gilmer De La Torre because of a shoulder injury. 
There's a lane violation here. Free throws continue to hamper the cause of the Bataan Risers in this game. In that third quarter, yun ang nakakapigil sa kanila na makahabol at uh, makatabla. But right now, it's stopping them from even getting any points on the board and cutting down this double-digit deficit. To your point, Batahan has missed 16 free throws in this game. That could be the difference of game number three. That's a foul at the backcourt. Too much pressure once again from the point guard of Pampanga. And now Toping Lagrama will check in with four personal fouls. And a round of applause for Raymond Binuya as he hits the bench. Very, very good floor time for him. Quality minutes definitely delivering on both ends for Pampanga. That has been his role for Pampanga in many years already in the MPBL. The only difference this year, he is already the team captain, representing them as a homegrown. Torado and company down by 12. Seven and a half minutes, Gagliardo, second try is good. That's good execution. They were able to force the mismatch. Oh, that's a good steal. Not completed. Don Vera. Hamito trying to seal. Vera with a kick out. Eight on the shot clock. Apolonio against John Bondo. Jason, step back three. No good. Takbo sa kabila. Testorado. Espuelas going to Bondo. Oh, a sorry miss. Could have been the easiest two points for, the ball for John Bondo. The other end, Vera could not convert. Balik tayo. Castro, Espuelas, this time it goes in. What a sigh of relief right there para sa risers. That shot by Don Vera at that left corner could have really, really hurt them. But right now, this lead down to just eight points as we head into this timeout. watching the OK Bet Maralika Pilipinas Basketball League at makakasama ko ngayon naman syempre ang head coach ng Nueva Ecija walang iba si Coach Gerson Coach Gerson Cabiltes Coach maraming nagtataka bakit daw nandito kayo eh kayo yung team na wala pang pan, wala pang talo pero um, kung ikaw ang tatanong sino ba yung gusto nyo mas gusto nyo makapat, makatapat uh, I'm just right here right now with my coaches uh, to scout the game uh, one thing I learned is uh, never choose your opponent because they have their own strengths and have their own strengths and weaknesses. Eh. So it's a very tight battle right now. It's very physical. So it's a good I don't want to choose. <laughs> At ito, meron kaming nasagap sa social media ang sabi niya, kahit sino daw ang manalo sa game na ito, mahihirapan daw sa Nueva Ecija. Uh, we'll just work hard for it so, para makuha namin yung ano, panalo on our next game. Yeah, maraming nag-aabang at definitely sa inyong uh, susunod na laro. And that is Coach Jerson Cabeltes of Nueva Ecija. Migs and Javi? Uh, thank you, Sheila, for trying. We really thank you. Pero ganyan talaga yan si Coach Jerson. <laughs> Marunong sumagot on TV. <laughs> and uh, you know, you can just imagine what's going through the mind of Coach Jerson Cabeltes as they continue to scout in tonight's ball game. Tama naman talaga. I mean, it's no denial that whoever will win this matchup will have a hard time going up against the undefeated Rice Vanguards who have home court advantage. Well, as all the other 21 teams this season have had difficulty in facing them. Vera still could not find the bottom of the rim. It ends up with Castro. 
Two on three, Castro all the way. Napaganda ba? It's two plus one for the Astro boy. Now this is the problem. Owen Pampanga misses on their three-point shots. A long shot, a long rebound. Batan is able to finish the defensive play. They're able to push the basketball in the giant lanterns. Slow to go down, only a couple of people back. Not enough to stop James Castro, who goes all the way for two. Castro coming alive once more, where it matters the most for the Bataan Risers. He trims the lead down to six points. And did you expect nothing less than a close game? Definitely. Definitely. This is everything that we have hoped for in Game 3 here at the Brenzi Giao Convention Center. In alam naman na talaga natin coming into this into this series that it would be a very very close fight these two teams proud proud representatives of their respective provinces and very evenly matched as I would say. This is the if you think, think about it, these two teams are actually neighboring provinces. Kaya iba rin yung rivalry talaga ng Bataan at Pampanga. You know what, Javi, before this game, meron akong narinig na dalawang tao nag-uusap. Yung isang humirit na 6.30 yung game, isang naro lang, mukhang maaga tayo uwi. Pero yung sagot ng kabilang tao, sabi niya, eh paano kung mag-quadruple overtime? <laughs> eh di 11 o'clock pa rin tayo matatapos. So tignan po natin kung ano magaganap sa ating game number 3 with all the sense of urgency in the world for both Pampanga and Bataan. Archie goes to topping the grama, being defended by Jethro Sombero. Nagrama and Sombero both have four fouls each. MJ, Archie, five seconds. Concepcion, kick out. Nagrama, fake, fire, no good. Rebound, MJ Garcia. Let me go back to topping Nagrama. Down to seven on the shot clock. Archie, cross, kick, Nagrama again. Yes, sir! But I'm not able to sustain the defense that they had on the previous offensive before that rebound and left topping Lagrama wide open. And he will not be ashamed to shoot it from the outside as he has had all game long. Miss or not, he will hoist it up. 13 points for topping Lagrama. This three point shot is brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances. This guy is known to be one of the best passers in the MPBL. But in this game, he is cutting it out as a shooter for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Actually, only has a couple of assists to his name. It is Topping Lagrama and is the leading scorer right now. Para sa kanyang kupunan. Very uncharacteristic. He actually has more fouls than assists, no? Which is very unusual. Two assists, four fouls, 13 points. Behind him are Ernest Reyes and Dom Vera as the leading scorers of Pampanga. Conversion by Jetro Sombero. Montangas, or make that Pataan, still hanging on here, down by seven. Under five minutes in game number three. Here's MJ Garcia. Against that zone of the Pataan risers. Topping. Finding himself open at the right side. It's Archie who will fire. Back to back threes for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Drive and draw. Pa ulit ulit lang para sa Pampanga. They repeated the same kind of offense on this play. That time it was Archie Concepcion, the beneficiary of a great kickout pass, and knocking it down, rattling in that three. Garcia dropping down Sombero, and Concepcion obviously having the clear advantage in height. Laban dito kay Chris Torado. No problem for him from downtown. Archie was one out of four from downtown entering game number three. So that's definitely a good sign for him. Concepcion, you mentioned he has to come alive as well. Not a part of the leading scorers for Papanga at this point. This free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subok at kompleto ng appliance brand the Pilipinas. Battle inside. Whistle blown by the referee in favor of Pampanga. That was a double lane violation right there. Nagrama breaking the D. They go back to Archie. 
against that zone. Watch out for another three. Garcia, his turn to fire. That's too strong. Rebound, Castro. Bataan on the run. Risers. A miss from Sombero. One more chance here. Castro creating space. Still no conversion. And that's just very unfortunate for the Bataan Risers. Hamito is down on the other end of the floor. Mukhabang cramps yan. It looks like it's cramps on that left calf. We hope it's not a pulled muscle. He's holding on to it right now and uh, taking five guys to be able to bring him off the court. Uh, Jammer Hamito, despite uh, the bad play at the start of the third quarter, came in. Dito sa fourth and final frame was able to get the intangibles para sa Pampanga, get those 50 50 balls go after offensive rebounds despite only having two points he does have 12 rebounds and hopefully he's going to be healthy this is Jammer Hamito especially if they do advance against Nueva Ecija in that regular season game between Pampanga and Nueva Ecija Hamito was the best player on the floor for Pampanga and he has already faced Nueva Ecija twice in this season one with San Juan and the second one with Pampanga and when you're when you're a team facing Nueva Ecija, you want to have all your big men in check against the army of oh. frontliners ng Nueva Ecija. What a great leap by MJ Garcia, keeping that ball alive. Pampanga up by nine, nine on the shot clock. Archie, cross in the spin, good tap by Torado. The other end we go, numbers for Bataan. Castro, Espuelas for two. Once again, Bataan getting their basket in transition. That's now 21 fast break points for the risers in this game. Pampanga throwing away the ball. Turnovers have become the thing that has haunted the Giant Lanterns for the most part of this match. We'll take a timeout here. Everyone at the edge of their seats. The last three minutes in game number three. Pampanga up by seven. Back inside the Bren Ziegiao Convention Center from San Fernando, Pampanga. Take a look at that fast break opportunity. James Castro feeding it to Gio Espuelas, who now has six points in the ball game. Torado and Castro have been high usage in this game. A shortage of guards for them. Castro is even playing with a back injury and a wrist injury as well. No more Jamil Gabawan. And uh, it looks to be that Jammer Hamito will still need a breather here for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Both players injuring their calves in this game. 61-54, under three minutes remaining. Do or die for RV Bringas and the Badan Risers. Same applies for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. You know, Mix, despite the numerous injuries para dito sa Bataan, Coach Ricky has stuck with a very tight rotation in this game. We haven't seen Dante Pagio. We haven't seen uh, J.R. David in this game. That's a good point. But it is usually the trend, right? In playoff basketball, we see a rotation mo. Bataan down by seven. Torado being hounded this time, but by a much smaller MJ Garcia. Pinapalabas, RB Bringas. They love this. Going down to him at the post in the fourth. And he will go to the line. Oh, Ernest Reyes was able to force him make a jump hook away from the basket. Kaya lang uh, may body contact dun, which uh, forced our referees to blow the whistle. Free throw story 
on your screen. Just a horrible number right there para sa Bataan Risers. Now 19 out of 39. But that is just too much misses with that many attempts para sa Bataan. Imagine if they made a bulk of those. They could have been so much more into this game. 19 out of 40 now for Bataan. They're only down by 6. Don Vera will slow it down. Alongside Andre Garcia, Archie Concepcion, Alex Ramos, and Ernest Reyes. Vera, drive and kick. Archie will fire. That's too strong. Rebound, Castro. Oh, great behind the back. Castro on the run. And he will go back to the line. Ball handling wizardry right there by James Castro to get away from the defense on that tight spot in the sideline. To be able to see himself go down into the middle and attack the paint and draw another person against Papanga. Castro at the line. I mentioned he was shooting the ball at a good rate from the free throw line in games one and two, but he's only two out of eight now at the line in game number three. That wrist is really, really uh, hampering his percentages in this game from all areas. Nevertheless, you mentioned a Herculean effort from James Castro. 14 points, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals for James Castro who will now take a breather. Balik dito, si Ron Lastimosa. 2 minutes and 9. Only a 5-point ball game. Oh, a steal by Pataan. Sombero, kick out. Espuelas, the spin. No good. Bring us inside. Wala pa rin. This last two minutes is brought to you by Embassy Whiskey. Chill muna tayo. Oh, RV baby, that attempt. There was really nobody there to provide any resistance on that putback. One of these teams set to advance to the North Division semifinals. And that will happen in 90 seconds. Archie, two seconds. Concepcion. Oh! -ho! The biggest three-point shot of the night for Archie Concepcion. For everybody who still has doubts about Archie Concepcion being a bona fide superstar here in the MPBL, that shot just tells you that he is definitely it. Take a look at it. One dribble, the pull-up. With great power comes great responsibility. Archie Concepcion stepping up as the all-star for Pampanga. 80 seconds remaining here. Castro, no conversion, baseline inbound. Everyone up on their feet here in game number three. And that's not a good sign for Bataan. More injuries here. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier in the game, mix. Because of that injured wrist, James Castro is forced to use his dribble penetrations to be able to get his points and it has definitely taken a toll on him just the effort he exerts into attacking the basket and getting the bumps along the way it has really been very taxing for his body that looks to be the hamstring right and we all know that in basketball the hamstring injury might just be the most dangerous. Sa pagiging tridor niyan. Sometimes you don't know. You're, you think you're healthy and yet you're still not. Bigla, bigla na lang kasi yan pipitik eh. So he had to be carried to the bench by RV Bringas. Just very unfortunate for it to happen at this time. Down by 8 with 1 minute and 17 remaining. The other end, the Pampanga fans anticipating their advance to the North Division semifinals against Coach Jerson Cabildes and the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. Of course, there's still time left here. Mataan might just pull off another miracle inside the Brengiao Convention Center. Baseline inbound. RV will fire. That's good. The other all-star coming alive for Mataan. It's just a five-point game. Garcia has to be careful here. Archie Concepcion looking up. 
13 on the shot clock. One minute remaining in game number three. Concepcion, cross and kick. MJ at the corner. No good. Rebound Alex Ramos, but it's stolen away. That's going to be an easy two for Chris Dorado. And it's down to three points. It is a single possession ball game here in game number three. In my opinion, Pampanga, they just tried to overdo that offensive possession. Here's that three-pointer by RV Bringas just stepping into that right corner. Ernest Reyes, although he had his hand up, didn't really matter much in Bringas hoisting up that three-point shot. And Bataan sticking with that 2-3 zone, forcing the turnover. They did not realize that Reyes was open on that baseline for an easy two. Pampanga now just up by three points as he headed to this timeout. Five seconds away from determining the opponent of the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards in the North Division semifinals. Folks, it is down to a single possession ball game inside the Brengiao Convention Center. 64 61. That's our executive officer, Joe Ramos, at the sidelines. Pampanga up by three, and they have the possession here. The Giant Lanterns are already in the penalty, and there's one last foul to give for Bataan. No more timeouts for the risers. One left for the Giant Lanterns. Bataan still has a foul to give here. They don't need to foul. They just have to have one stop on this defensive possession. Get the ball back and score on the ensuing offensive. MJ Garcia working with Ernest Reyes, RG Concepcion, Raymond Binuya, and Alex Ramos. There's that pressure defense. Double team, Binuya now has it. 12 on the shot clock, Garcia. Archie asking for it. MJ decides to take it on his own hands. Binuya will fire, in and out. 22 seconds here. Espuelas looking ahead, almost a turnover. Gio, Walayan, Gallardo is fouled. And we go back to the free throw line for the Bataan Risers. If you're gonna see what has happened throughout this game, that for me is still a good stop para sa Pampanga with the way Bataan has been shooting free throws in this game. Ron Lastimosa was wide open on that left corner for a game-tying three-point shot. But instead, Rick Gallardo will be the one trooping to the line here. Look at that, 20 out of 42, 20 out of 43. Right now, for Bataan in this game. And without a doubt, that is the stat that will bite them in the back in case of a loss here in Game 3. Gallardo is now one out of three from the line. Hear it from the Kapampangan. Second one is good. This is the last time out of the ball game. Pampanga will have possession. They're up by two with 15 seconds to go. What are you expecting here from both teams? Oh, Bataan will definitely play for the steal here. Uh, Siguro they'll have uh, five, eight seconds chopped off the clock before they eventually go for the foul. But they definitely have the tools to be able to force the turnover with what their length. And uh, it has been proven in this game, especially 22 turnovers para sa Pampanga in this game. And a lot of them coming in the crucial moments here, which allow the risers to get back in contention for a victory here in Game 3. Ayan po sinasabi natin. It has come to the point wherein people are now watching from windows in this Brengiao Convention Center. And again, we would just like to give our love to these Kapampangans, always present for the Giant Lanterns. A big reason why they have a winning record here in the Brengiao Convention Center. This is the first season 
that this arena has hosted for the MBBL. It used to be the AUF gym in Angeles, Pampanga. Now we transfer to San Fernando and it is still the same energy from these Kapampangans. They are 14 seconds away, potentially, from advancing to the semifinals, which will begin this Monday in the Nueva Ecija Coliseum. There you see Deputy Speaker Congressman Don Gonzalez alongside City Councilor Brent Gonzalez. The VIPs at the sidelines. It will be a sideline inbound for Don Vera, who will be working with Topping Nagrama, Archie Concepcion, Ernest Reyes, and MJ Garcia. Defending are RB Bringas, Chris Dorado, Jetro Sombero, Ron Lastimosa, and John Bondok. No more timeouts remaining. One last foul to give for Bataan. They go to Lagrama. Garcia to Archie. Pampanga burning down that clock. Eight seconds here. They have to foul. Wala pa rin. Still no call. And there it is with three seconds remaining. I cannot believe they did not call a foul here near the half line. That obviously was a personal. And the masama pa dito, that's the last foul to give. So they have to foul once again. 3.3 seconds alone na titira dito. All Papanga has to do is inbound safely. Only a miracle can get this game into overtime or even a victory para sa risers right now. Sideline inbound once more. 3.3 seconds. Who will break free? It's Reyes. Back to Vera who escapes the defense. Again, Bataan arguing for an earlier foul. Ron Lastimosa is still explaining that they fouled Pampanga as soon as they inbounded. Don Vera will shoot free throws with 0.8 seconds remaining and no more timeouts left for Bataan. This is virtually over yeah. for they, the Bataan Risers. This or not, this is already in the bag for the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. It makes, we were talking about this at our pregame. If Pampanga is able to find the finishing touch in this game, because we expected this game to be close, they definitely will uh, have a good chance of ending up with the victory on their home floor. And that's exactly what happened here today. G uh, gathering enough poise in the crucial moments, in the final seconds. Besting their Northern Division rivals. And yes, that is the perfect way to say it. This is a rivalry in the MPBL. Makatabing Propinsa, two teams who have played four games against each other in this season, all separated by just a couple of possessions. It has been tight all season long for Pampanga in Bataan. 1.5 seconds here. If Vera makes this, it's over. If he misses this, it just has to be a Hail Mary to be made by the Bataan Risers to even force overtime. Let's see. Vera will shoot the second free throw here. 1.5 seconds to go. If he makes this, they advance to the North Division semifinals. And there's the finishing touch. There cannot be a foul here. And there it is. Archie Concepcion getting the steal. And the Pampanga Giant Lanterns advance to the North Division semifinals to set up a date with the undefeated, the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. What can I say, Mix? Just a classic series. All three games were very tightly contested. Just a great showing by both squads. Wala talaga nagpatalo. They left it all on the floor. Great show of sportsmanship. And when I say sportsmanship, it's really putting out your best onto the floor at all times. What a great series by Pampanga in Batan. That's a great way to put it. The sportsmanship being exchanged by these players right now at center court. 
But Anne should leave this building with her heads held up high. Remember, this is one of the best home courts in the whole of the MPBL. It's very hard to play in Pampanga. And yet they won game two in overtime. And they only lose game three by four points. RB bring us James Castro, Chris Dorado, and the rest of Pataan playing hurt without Gilmer De La Torre. Jamil Gabawan goes down. James Castro goes down. And yet Pampanga able to survive against them. Ernest Reyes is our player of the game brought to you by OK Bet, the official partner of the MPBL with OK Bet. On the win, a quiet guy, but still very stable for Pampanga. Yeah, a lot of people might be wondering why you picked Ernest Reyes as our player of the game. Archie Concepcion had 13 points, Lagrama had 13, Vera had 10 as well, but Reyes really was the stabilizer para sa Pampanga. Any time that Bataan was threatening to go on a run, he would get baskets, get those 50-50 balls, grab the offensive rebounds, and yung brilliance niya was all game long. And that's the reason why we chose him as player of the game. Totally agree with that. Ernest Reyes is now with Chila Salaysay. Maraming salamang, Megs and Javi. And kasama ko nga, Ernest Reyes, congratulations on winning Game 3. Pero gusto kong i-comment, syempre, ang ganda na naging takbo nitong series na ito. Pero from a Game 1, for 3 points, 2 assists, 1 block, nag-step up ka. This Game 2, 10 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists, and 3 blocks. Na kung, kung saan kailangan na kailangan yung servisyo mo. Hey, yun lang po yung game plan namin. Gumawa ng bola, rumibaw, lumangko. Tapos yung mga tulong-tulong po kami sa sa opensa, sa kadepensa. Kaya uh, syempre, paano nyo naman mapapatuloy na magningning yung uh, ningning ng liwanag ng parol ninyo going into the next round? Bali po, paganda po namin mabuti yung Paganda po namin mabuti yung susunod namin kalaban. Bali, one, one game at a time kami para prepare kami sa mga susunod namin laban. Lahat ng nandito sa loob ng uh, gym, masayang-masaya at kasama nyong nagsa-celebrate. Meron ka bang gustong pasalamatan o sabihin sa lahat ng sumuporta sa inyo? Nagpapasalamat po ako sa mga boss, sa mga boss namin, mga Gonzales, sila coach, si, si Boss Delta, yung mga pamilya ko, yung asawa ko. Yung mga manunod po ng mga kapampangan, salamat po sa lahat. Si Congressman, si, si Gov, saka po, sa nanay po ni Coach Jordan, get well soon po. Thank you po. Maraming salamat. Congratulations, Ernest Reyes, ang ating player of the game. And this player of the game is brought to you by OK Bet, the official partner of the MPBL with OK Bet on the win. Ngayon, mapuntahan ko naman ang winning coach, Coach Ala Trinidad. Congratulations. Finally, niya nakuha niyo na ang panalo. Pero coming into the next round, ang makakalaban niyo, number one seed, which is Nueva Ecija. Kanina merong nag-comment, kahit daw sino manalo sa series na ito, mahihirapan sa team na yon. Anong masasabi mo dito? I think itong semifinals is anybody's ball game. Maghahandaan din namin. Eh, at least, uh, alam ko naman, malakas ang Nueva Ecija, pero only five players are playing inside the court. So kahit na 12 or 15 players ang malakas nila, eh lima-lima lang naman lalaro. So I hope we can cope out with them. Well, you talk about the number of players. Kung ikukumpara yung roster ninyo at yung roster ng Nueva Ecija, pa parehong malalim ang bench. Ngayon, paano nyo ba yun mamamaximize sa susunod na serye? Yeah, uh, siguro mamaximize namin. Eh, ito ng mga players naman namin eh halos sana. Uh, mag-step up sila, mag-mature dito ng semifinals in time. At syempre, lahat nga ay masayang-masaya na nandito at uh, nakikiselebrate sa inyong panalog. Inais ka ba ang mensahe o pasalamatan? Lahat naman ang ginawa namin ito, eh, eh, plano rin ni Gob. Ang game plan namin, siya lahat ang nag-design, sinunod lang namin kaming nasa coaching staff. Nagpapasalamat din kami sa kanya tapos kay Nanay Baby Pineda, Vice Governor namin, kay Congressman Don Gonzalez, ang pinaka-owner namin. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po, Coach Alan Trinidad. At syempre, hindi mawawala uh, si, of course, Congressman Don Gonzalez sa laro ng Pampanga. Congratulations po. Well, nakala salamat. Karingin ka na ka ng Kapampangan. Kung support na pala, kapampangan tayo po yung Kapampangan. Pampanga!
headed by Governor Dennis Delta Pineda, Vice Governor Nanay, and the entire Kapangpangan po. Congratulations sa mga Nueva Ecija, Congressman Joet, Governor Garcia, mga kaibigan ko nandyan. Congratulations! Binigyan natin ng magandang laro at kasiyahan ang mga Pilipino. Maraming maraming salamat po! See you around! Maraming maraming salamat po, Hongres Man, of course. Congratulations again sa Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Mix and Javi. Thank you, Sheila. You have to love the confidence about uh, these Pampanga Giant Lanterns as they face the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards beginning this Monday in Palayan City. Pasig and San Juan will travel there again as well to have their very own series in the semi-finals. Zamboanga waiting for the victors between uh, Bacolod and Jensen tomorrow. Batangas and Bacor will battle it out to face Rizal in their very own semi-finals in the South Division. There you see the schedule tomorrow. Jensen, Bacolod, Bacor and Batangas happening inside the Batangas City Coliseum live on 1PH. That being said, we would like to congratulate the Batan Risers as well. A great season for them. All but three players are homegrowns, widely celebrated here in the MPBL. The entry of Coach Ricky Dandan proving very effective as well for that Pataan program. Thank you so much for joining us. In behalf of my partner, Javi Palanya, our courtside reporter, Sheila Salaysay, my name is Mix Gomez, Pampanga advancing to the semifinals. Ito po ang Maharliga Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino.